Hi everyone, this is Ohad Schneider, and today I'm going to talk about TV Game Launcher, a program that's going to help you launch your games on your HDMI connected TV or any other display really. So the first thing you want to do is go to sourceforge.net slash project slash TV Game Launcher, or simply search for TV Game Launcher in your favorite web search engine or in SourceForge's search box right here. So once you get to this page, you can simply download the zip file. It's going to take a couple of seconds, or you can just click the direct link to speed it up, uh, whichever you prefer. And once you open it, you can simply unzip all the files to whichever directory you want, and that's it. It's installed. Now, you want to double-click TV Game Launcher GUI here, and you may get this warning because Windows it doesn't recognize this program because it's rather new, but it really is. You can look at the source if you really want to. It's not a virus. So let's click Run anyway, and we're going to see this GUI here, this user interface. It's pretty simple. You have the main option here of switching monitors. You simply select which is your TV and which is your monitor. Now, note that some TVs may appear as a generic PNP monitor, and uh, whereas my monitor does appear as the Dell, the model number, uh, the reason is due to some Windows API limitations, but you can usually figure out which is which and uh, worst case scenario you can simply experiment and figure out uh, which, uh, which is the TV and which is the monitor. So uh, it's no big deal once you do it once, it's going to stay that way. So the other interesting option is the default audio endpoint switching. Uh, and that usually comes in useful when you have an HDMI connected TV and you want your audio to come out of the TV while you're playing. And in, in this example, I have an AMD graphics card, so I selected the AMD audio endpoint as the HDMI, and I also selected my speaker so that once the game exits, it knows to, TV Game Launcher knows to switch it back to the speakers. Now we have a couple more options here in the miscellaneous group. As you can see, you can keep the computer awake and that prevents screensaver and that comes in handy when the game itself doesn't prevent the, sc the screensaver or hibernation or sleep from happening and you use a gamepad uh, to play the game and the gamepad won't stop the screensaver. Gamepad key presses won't register as something that's going to stop screensaver and sleep and hibernation and stuff like that so it can it may come in handy. Uh, one notable example is Hotline Miami. You want to have this checked for that game if you're using the gamepad. And the last option you have here is to darken non-primary primary displays. This is mostly for atmosphere, you know, immersion. When you play your game, you want the other screens to be on other displays rather to be darkened out. So once you configure this uh, to whichever you want, uh, it's going to save your preferences, so if you exit and come back, it's going to be saved, as you can see. So once you have TV Game Launcher GUI configured the way you want to, using it is pretty straightforward. As you can see, there are a couple of drag-and-drop areas at the bottom. The rightmost one will create a TV shortcut, which, which is basically a shortcut for your game, which will automatically run your TV or whatever you define as the TV and do all the audio endpoint switching and... Um, screen darkening and whatever you chose and the leftmost drag and drop panel will simply run the game immediately on the TV in case you don't want a shortcut for whatever reason. So for example let's take Strike Suit Zero. You simply take the shortcut and drag it to the rightmost panel and as you can see a shortcut for the TV was created on my desktop and once I double click that the game is going to launch on the TV and do all the switching etc. Another possibility is dragging the executable directly. If you don't have a shortcut, you simply take the, ex the game executable, drag it to the rightmost, drag and drop pane, and the effect is going to be very similar. One thing I should note at this point is there is that Steam shortcuts behave differently. As you can see here, I have a Steam game, and looking at its properties, there is no executable, there is no working directory, so when I drag it to TV Game Launcher, it's going to ask me for the game's executable because it doesn't know which executable is going to get called, so it doesn't know when to revert when the game exits. So it's pretty simple to find the game executable. Usually you simply go to you, your Steam settings right here, <clears throat> and in the download section, you can look at your Steam library folders. So it's going to 
usually being one of those. For example, F Steam, if we go to F Steam, it's usually going to be under Steam Apps, Common, and here's a list of all of my games, in this case, Solar 2. We're going to select Solar 2, and that's it. The shortcut has been created. You're going to get a similar experience if you drag it to the immediate uh, TV launching area here. And uh, that's it. Enjoy playing your games on your TV, and uh, thank you for listening.